Hello everyone, welcome back to the Darkest Dungeon. Aha, uh -huh. we are, what are we doing? I don't know. In the last episode, we did retreat from an attempt at the ruins, which was a normal run in that we weren't doing the boss. But unfortunately, it didn't cause any progression in the people that were currently in the hamlet. Specifically, I'm concerned about Holmesy, who is still, for goodness sake, meditating. And Holmesy is our ace in the hole when it comes to doing the boss rush, because the boss rush? This isn't Isaac. The boss. Full stop. Um, because Holmesy is really the only person who has a reliable amount of healing. We are going to be taking Pete, but Pete's going to be doing a lot of debuffing of the boss as much as possible to try and reduce the amount of damage the boss is outputting so that we can take more DPS and have to rely less on tanking. Uh, which is how the whole, the whole campaign is going to go. If we continue the way we're going, we have 8,000 gold and we have some things we can do. And don't forget this happened, the rumour of riches, where I don't know what it does and I haven't looked it up, I'm not going to spoiler it, but I'm assuming that if we take out either of these bounty hunters on a run, we are likely to find more gold. Or more valuable things, I don't know. That's DT there and Vague here. Now we could take uh, sort of a run down this level. Maybe. Um... I mean, there's literally no healing down here at all. Except, mate, like, you know, Viz has self-heal at some point. But that's it. And stress heal plus 10. Speaking of stress heal, it was pointed out to me that the Jester here does have a stress healing skill. Which is... Well, uh, yeah, this one. Everyone, presumably it applies to everybody. It heals plus 10, but it also has a minus 10% stress damage on it. If we just spammed that as a buff throughout the entirety of the ruins on the way to the boss. We stand a good chance of getting to the boss not already afflicted and hopefully not even stressed out at all if we can manage it. It does mean that this unit will not be doing any DPS because their DPS involves moving around a lot and of course we would have to take off one of these skills in order to carry it. <clears throat> now usually what we do is if we don't want to use the dancing around type moves we just buff anyway, so we might as well try and spend the money to get Penelope Puddles here up to have an inspiring tune and maybe bring them even at only level 3 into the ruins. But let's have a look at what we can do. This is the, the cowardly set from last time. They were very high level though, so I'm not too salty. Obviously, all those people got very much uh, stressed out. Although, do they not take D? Oh no, Marty, here we go. Uh, two of them are currently afflicted, paranoid, and fearful. So we're definitely going to want to spend some money at some point to get them back down to okay. <clears throat> but we can't afford to at the moment not to be able to do that and to actually embark on something. So maybe we want to think about doing... Uh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> bad timing. Uh, maybe we want to think about doing something really easy. Uh, a short... Well, a level 1 mission isn't going to work. It's going to have to be level th 3, and that's long. I think that's what the spikes mean. Short level 3 mission could do it. It is in the ruins, which does scare me a little bit. We do have a new boss, a new 12 pounder, which I'm also very scared of, but we're going to have to do it at some point, but that's very likely to kill somebody. I think this might have to happen on the next batch of recruits that get to, to that level, but of course, no healer in that set. Although, we could start... Let's have a look in our um, stagecoach here. What I'm really looking for is a level 2... Vestal, or even a level 1 Vestal would be okay. But I really want a Vestal, someone who's really good at healing and they can just spec them for heal and then forget about it. You know, we can bring them, we can protect them, and they can keep us going. It'll keep Sajaris alive and all these people here as we level them up uh, until they get to Holmes's level and then we'll do the whole sordid cycle over and over again. So we can't really afford to upgrade anybody. So let's let's spec out a group of people that will be going to the ruins. No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, at some point, yes, but not right now. Uh, with no healing. Which is scary as all hell. But we definitely want Vague. Because I want to see what this does. This um, town event. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> do we respec somehow? I think maybe not. We can definitely bring a marking party. That reduces prop, which is really good if we're going to be doing DPS. So we'll put Vague at the front, and we can also use Erasmus there to then take uh, 
this is 25% damage versus marked. So we can take advantage of the marking that we're going to be doing without having to take a mark. I don't think... No, they don't have a mark. But if Erasmus goes in the third position, then uh, Vayke is perfectly happy to, have, uh, to work from the second position, which is fine. We might as well take Dutch, because Dutch hasn't been out for quite some time. Does prefer to be at the back. Has got a small amount of healing that we can take advantage of, if necessary. Uh, and then... I guess we try and level up Penelope Puddles to see if it's going to work in the ruins. I'm not 100% not on that, to be honest with you. I don't want to take Viz because we are going to a place with a lot of stress dealing units. And I kind of don't really want to take... I guess we could take... Yeah. We can heal ourselves here, which certainly helps. We have Erasmus, but we're not going to be able to camp. So you've got Haemophilia, which is less... Everyone's got a thing. Less damage is not great. This is terrible. Maybe we try and do a medium mission after all. But that's only this one. <laughs> oh, goodness. Or a long one. But we'll die. We can't do that without a healer. So I think we just try and get through this one as much as possible. Ugh, I don't like it just because of the number of these there are and the fact we can't use any camping skills because we're not going to be camping. But less, less damage, less debuff resist. I mean, it's not terrible. This one's meaningless. This is a bit of a problem. Wait, you can't be there. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, no, that's fine, because you're going to be in the third position most of the time. So we're going to equip Erasmus with that going first trinket, which has done as well so, done as so well so far that I sort of feel like it's a default, you have to use this type of trinket. So we'll sort by restriction, we'll open up vague. Let's try and compensate for some of your diseases then. Scouting chance, not really. More speed, maybe. More damage. I guess that makes sense. And then something that just assists us to not die. Uh, yeah, more resistances will overcome the fact that we have poor resistances on that character right now. Houndmaster. Stun skill is something I'm thinking I might use quite a lot. Less debuff. More trap disarm, but it's below 20, uh, a dark run, that one, so I'm not going to be doing that. At some point, we will have to do a dark run and try and, you know, succeed without coming across a shambling horror, but I don't really feel like we're in that position right now. So, um, we'll look at that later. Position four, no. Maybe this one? We'll prop more dodge. We kind of just want more damage here, don't we? Maybe damage versus human, because we're actually going into the ruins where most things are human or, I think unholy. You're definitely going to be taking this so that you can go first. And I'm wondering about these. More dodge, more accuracy, more stress, more speed, more stun. I think maybe we won't be using... Oh, we might do actually. If we shadow fade twice, that's two stuns. It's at least one stun because we want to get them from this position to this position. Whether we want to put them back into this position remains to be seen. Because from this position, we can start using the Throne Dagger, which will synergize with the marking. So I think having some stun resist will be worthwhile. Uh, some stun uh, chance will be worthwhile. So, I mean, we might as well. And then you can have the Sniper's Ring, as usual, which is this one. More accuracy is really good for, um, for Dutch there, because the powerful shot is slightly less accurate, as far as I remember. And don't forget, we also have... The uh, scatter shot, which is really helpful. Do you? Got mark. Blind fire. Blind fire is one we want. Uh, might unlock that. I'm thinking maybe more torch. Clear mark. Yeah, let's go and unlock that because Dutch is fairly low level right now. Which makes me think if we're going to unlock it, we should do it whilst we don't have to put too many ranks in it to make it worthwhile doing that. We should also upgrade <laughs> quite a lot here. Um, we want blind fire. Blind fire is really good if you don't mind who you hit. Because it's very strong. Let's dodge is pretty sweet. I'm going to leave that where it is. Minus 22 dodges. Fine for our purposes. And we should make sure that we actually turn that on. So we're going to remove that. Add that. wonder what... Oh, these are the units that you can apply to. So you have to pay attention to that. It's the only place it tells you. So let's go back to the embarkation screen and have a look at Dutch's trinkets. Now that we have... 
blind fire, I think maybe just taking a straight up damage upgrade would be really good for us. Do you think that's worth it? 20% damage is a good amount of damage. I mean, plus 10% stress damage, I think is fine, and simply for the fact that we're going to do so much more damage with a high accuracy, high damage shot, that hopefully we can just avoid being given stress attacks by by assaulting harder. You know, a good offense is the best defense. We spent a lot of money on Dutch just now, but I'm happy to, to have done so. Uh, it's a short mission, so I'll take... I'll just take one stack. Uh, thank you. And... Take one stack of each. I don't think anyone's got worms. The worries. More stress damage. That's maybe not the best thing to bring. We'll see. What's your... Let's check everyone's stress. No stress. No stress. No stress. Slight amount. Okay, so we're, we're going to be okay on stress at least for a while. I'll take another one of these. We'll definitely take two keys. Maybe one of these. And I'm also going to take a few bandages because we cannot cope with being bled at all right now. Because don't forget, no healing. And I am half expecting to run away from this. Uh, to Scarpa. To Skidaddle. To bravely run, or run away like brave, brave Sir Robin before us. But I'm hoping we can get through this before that becomes a problem. 100% of rune battles means it could end just abruptly. And then we can go, oh, thank God for that, and leave. But I'm going to keep my... <laughs> Hello. I'm going to keep my throat alive and hopefully hit this. Yes! He shoots, he scores. Could crit, did. Bring it on. That is actually really good, because obviously with the amount of stress damage that Dutch is going to be taking at this stage... Whew, we we really really don't want to be um, letting any stress units live, so we're going to be doing a, a Hound Harry, I think. Honestly, I want the marking to go first, but is this really the best setup? This is the only one we got, so so be it. I guess we just attack. We're going to just pick one and mark it, basically. The bleeds are going to do us no good in this round, uh, in this combat, but I guess that's fine. Uh, we should have brought more food because it will allow us to heal, which I hadn't thought of until just now. So we'll mark. They've all got dodge and no prop, so it doesn't matter that we marked this one, and I'm just going to make sure that this one dies ASAP. Now this takes, yeah, 80, lots of damage versus marked, a crit, perfect. So it took a bit of damage on this round, which is not ideal because we can't do anything about it. Well, Dutch can do something about it, to be fair. Um... Yeah, that works out really well as well. Um, but I don't really think I'm likely to get Dutch to do anything. You can actually lick your own wounds, which is... Just don't do it at a children's party, okay? Um, and it's it's then just Erasmus that I've got a bit of a problem with. We should have damage versus stunned. Yeah, this one. Perfect. So we're doing actually quite well now. That, that unit wasn't getting a go anyway, but it was good to take the opportunity to kill it whilst it was stunned. I think we can afford to do this. And a crit as well. Super helpful. It was good to take the opportunity to kill that whilst it was stunned, because obviously it, it wouldn't have been stunned if we'd let it actually have a go. Because it, the stun would have come off. And I'd rather it was dead than just skipping a go, if entirely possible. A uh, pick to the face could do enough damage. And it absolutely Literary. did. So that was actually a perfectly suitable fight. I'm quite happy with Remind that. Yourself that overconfidence is a slow so, and insidious put our default killer. order back. See, having Immunism in that position there doesn't matter, even though it's a... Uh, empty sack. Even though it's a less than optimal position. I want to open it with the key. You twat. Um, because Erasmus will always go first. And therefore reposition us correctly, having done a crit and killed something and a maze balls. Sweet. Battle. No battle. So our first battle's right down, our first rune battle's right down here. A bit of a bugger because it does mean that... Sorry, what are you doing? It does mean that, of course... Loot are often low on supplies. What does it mean? It means that we're going to have some battles before we get the opportunity to, you know, not have battles, right? That is the highest roll without a crit, which is super good as well. As long as Erasmus keeps doing this, I'm absolutely happy with it. Resisted the debuff, did, did get a bleed, because hemophilia is going to cause that to happen, which is basically why I brought a few extra bandages. 
Uh, I don't think Dutch's bandage actually stops bleeding. It does not. But, you know, it is what it is. This is human, so we can actually attack it with this unit, who is also doing damage versus human. So, yeah, good job. <laughs> but it can bleed in theory, which is basically why I did that. A good dodge there certainly helps us in that situation. Uh, I think it might be worth marking. Let's see what our damage does. 16, uh, 10 to 18, so we could kill it. I mean, if we don't hit it now, okay, here's how this works. Either we hit it, and now it's in death range, or we mark it and basically put it in death range anyway. Either way, we have to hit it once with one unit. Oh, that's bad. Four damage is actually okay. We can immediately use this, and then... Honestly, I think I'll just pick to the face. Like I was saying, we're going to have to hit that unit twice, whether it's a... Uh, a mark and then a high damage attack or two low damage attacks doesn't really matter but it's actually more likely that the low damage attack stacked on top of each other kill it whereas the mark thing that we were doing there is quite likely to fail to kill it now in this case it's <laughs> when something's got so much damage that you're not going to hit it twice in a row Putting a mark on it is basically good if you envisage please, um, that you're going to need a couple of rounds in order to kill it, even with the mark damage, like the bonus the mark affords you. But if you don't think that's going to happen, then it's probably better to just straight up do damage to it, because even your damage attacks could apply a debuff or something. That you hadn't considered. I really need to heal this unit. I was kind of hoping to find some food by now. <laughs> There's not a lot of food in the ruins, which is entirely my fault sort of for overlooking it. And it's going to be our first room battle. And Erasmus will be going first, but there's not a lot we can do. Um, also, by the way, we'll talk about this. I've noticed that the layout of the dungeon seems to be somewhat based on on the dungeon. Like, which dungeon you've selected. Uh, probably this unit. Because we, we've noticed that in, e.g., the Weald or the Warrens or whichever one, we tend to find we get those boxy ones where you've got a grid of, of rooms and you can just sort of freely walk between them or as much as you like, basically. Uh, I might have to do that twice. That's okay. Right, in this case, you want to put a mark on because you think you're going to have to hit it several times. Um, whereas in the ruins, we tend to get very long straight ones, which means we have to do a lot of rooms, which is why I'm trying to prepare so much for the profit. Miss. <laughs> Not brilliant. Because the profit, so far, has been several rooms away, whereas previously, stone 70... Yeah, sure. Um, the, the other bosses that we did were basically three maximum of four rooms away from the start. Stunned or marked. I think 90 damage this mark is a good idea. <gasps> 26 crit as well. You are dead as. That's fine. Uh, I think we're going to have to lick our wounds entirely on this round here, which is fine, as long as nobody actually dies. Good. I'm glad we did it there. So, having to so consistently walk so far in the ruins, I'm wondering if it's actually part of the RNG. Like, the, the limited options that we have for the dungeon layout per dungeon. Ouch. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you need to just stop being bad. Like, it's got five... This does give us an accuracy buff, so I'm gonna do it. Size alone does not the sharpened blade. Could lose Erasmus very soon. Uh... This is actually a very painful round, unfortunately. Can we just kill these straight up? We can't even hit them. This one can. It's not enough. 
Uh... Does this still have 220% move? I guess in this case we we mark things. Debuff didn't work, but that's fine. I'm gonna say for Dutch to deal with, but Dutch has to heal <laughs> Rasmus. When this starts stacking up, we're gonna be doing really well with that heal. Uh, this is damage versus mark though, so we'll do that. Of course it's gonna resist the bleed, it is a skeleton. Pretty much expected. Uh, this does damage versus mark. Give them no quarter. So it seems as long as Vague has marked it, Erasmus can kill it. Which is good enough. I'm happy with that situation. Excuse me, where's my plus a million percent? Whatever. We can get through this fight and see maybe if we get a scouting and uh, something comes along and fixes everybody. Or at least means that we don't have to worry about it too much. We can't reach this, but we can try and get rid of this. Just bring it closer. That seems fine. We will lick our own wounds here. Because that has yet to have a go. And now we will snipe it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm happy with this amount of HP, but it's basically one round for everybody before everyone's dead. Holy shit! You see, this is what I expected to happen. Every single... Uh, rune battle could be the last. We didn't get a scout, so I'm actually not going to risk it, uh, and I'm just going to leave. I was hoping that if we got a scout, we could know whether the corridor was safe, and then we could pick up some more stuff. I'm really not prepared to risk that. Um, I'm just happy to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. There we go. I'm just happy to get people with some money and some XP there. Spotted Fever has replaced Bulimic. That's fine. That's pretty good. That isn't very good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Evasive is probably better though. I think Dutch did actually dodge a couple of uh, bullets, well, quarrels there is a great back then. Hunzi. A crawling chaos For fuck's sake. Must be destroyed. <laughs> what is happening? Good. Well, Hunzi back in action at least, although she did just spend a thousand gold because she's too fucking nice. But it means we can at least think about our next mission, which is going to be to go for the profit. We have enough money to even upgrade some people if we feel that it is necessary to do so. Homesy's only problem is rabies, which is... I don't think you can be... I don't think you can miss a heal, although I'm prepared to be proven wrong at the worst possible moment. We will also take Pete, who is going to have Weaken and Curse and Vulnerability Hex, maybe... Word reconstruction as a backup. Abyssal artillery will certainly help, so it's sacrificial stab that we're going to not have for that. But we will, of course, turn that on just before the boss fight, and don't forget. Which puts Pete in this position, which is really good, because that's where we want him. Then... Megistos is going to try and tank any drops that are going to land on Holmesy. with Guard Ally and Prot on self. Plus the fact that Pete will have at least done a... Uh, at least one reduction of damage with Weakening Curse, hopefully. And then who's going to be our last person? I'm thinking maybe DT. We don't really have much DPS here, is the problem. But we need to get there, which is why I'm taking a healer as well as Pete, rather than Pete as the healer. I mean... Megistos isn't much of a, a damage dealer. That seems to be pretty obvious. And DT can't actually hit the back particularly easily except to try and drag things forwards, which is no good at all. Which means we need... We could take Erasmus. Even Lunge doesn't reach the back. But, I mean, killing the pews is not a bad idea. It's just that it'll take a while before we could do any damage to the boss at all, which doesn't fill me with confidence. And besides, Erasmus is currently only level 3. Which means we're going to want to take everyone else again in order to deal with it. But if we take... Even Raguda can't really hit the back. Duelist advance. But then... Like Pistol Shot. But we don't have a marking unit anymore. I 
I would have expected tracking shot to mark, actually, but it doesn't. Um, oh, there's Penelope. Penelope Puddles. Preferred position is the third one, which, I mean, again, we can't hit the back. But we can reduce a lot of damage, uh, a lot of stress. It's turning out to be quite a difficult thing to spec for, because if we can't hit the back early, there's no point being there. We can't put anyone at the back, because we need that position for... Oh, actually, Holmesy can hit the back. You can do some damage while we wait. Only Judgment. Only Judgment can hit the back and the f whilst being at the back. <laughs> we could swap these two round for that position. Let's, uh... Yeah, I'm thinking that might be worthwhile. If we did this, just before we went in, and then switched these two round, and then did something like... And, and then we can use Illumination as well as... It depends on their dodge, really. Damage mod minus 50%, minus 20%, so we could stay in the position we're in. Actually, your preferred position is the same as Pete's. That's because of this one. Um, so if we switch Pete to this setup just before we go into the boss fight, and don't forget, then there is a good chance that switching those two around will be useful. Uh, but we'll do that in the next episode when we've figured out who to put here. Uh, I think I'll do that then. I'm going to have a think about it, and I will see you then.